In class, we developed the formulas for simple interest, for periodic compound interest, and for continuous compound interest. We're looking at different scenarios of problems that can occur with those. We notice that there are 12 different problems because there are four different variables in each of the <coughs> uh, problems, in each of the formulas, and there are three formulas. So in each of these problems, we're going to identify what type of interest is, is uh, being used in the account, and that will tell us which one of the three formulas to use. Once we've done that, we'll identify the missing variable, we'll identify the value of each of the known variables, plug those into the, uh, substitute those into the correct interest formula, and algebraically solve for the missing variable. Here's our next problem. Because this is a continuous compound interest formula, the right formula is A is equal to P e raised to the RT power. The known information is that the, uh, sorry, that's not the right known information. Okay, with that correction, the known information is that the present value is $300. That's a principal, the amount we're going to deposit in the bank. We're earning 3% compounded continuously, and the time is going to be five years, and we're looking for the future value, the uh, final amount. Substitute the known information into the uh, appropriate equation, and we're left now with just a calculator problem. My ca calculator gave the result 348.5503. Of course, we're talking about dollars and cents here, so we'll need to uh, adjust that to read $348.55. Here's our next problem. We again notice that it's a continuous compound interest problem. So the appropriate formula is the continuous compound interest formula. The known information is that the present value is going to be 300. That's the principal, the amount we'll deposit. The time is going to be a, f a five year time period. The uh, future value is $350. And so we're looking to find what the interest rate would need to be for that to occur. Substitute the known information into the appropriate formula. We're trying to solve for R. The last thing that's being done on the right hand side is multiplying by 300. So we'll divide both sides by 300. Now we're trying to solve for r. We need to get r out of the exponent, so we'll take the natural log of both sides using the algebra property of logarithms. That allows us to bring the 5r down to the baseline. You may remember that the natural log of e is just 1. So we'll be able to solve for r by just dividing both sides by 5. That leaves us with the calculator formula to find out what r is. My calculator finds R to be that amount, which is 3.08%. Our next problem is again a continuous compound interest problem. Because it's compounded continuously, we'll use this particular formula. That's appropriate formula. The rate is 3% or 0.03. The uh, future value is going to be 400, and uh, the time is going to be six years. We need to know how much the present value is. How much do we need to be deposit now to end up with that 400? P is being multiplied by E to the that particular power. We'll just need to divide both sides by that amount. That's now a calculator uh, problem. My calculator gets that amount, and since we're looking at uh, what the present value would need to be to assure that we end up with the $400, we'll need to round that up to the next penny. So our final amount, the principal value needs to be $334.11 to end up with a future value of $400 in six years at continuous compound interest of 3%. That brings us to the final of our the, the our final problem of the 12. This is continuous compound interest, so the appropriate formula is given. 
uh, by A is equal to P e, uh, e raised to the RT power. The known information is that the present value is going to be $200. The future value, oops, hang on, we need to make a correction there. The present value is $200. The future value is $275. And the interest rate is 5% compounded continuously. We want to know how long it will take to get that future value. Substitute the known information into the formula. On the right hand side, the last thing that's being done is we're multiplying by this 200. So let's divide both sides by 200. We need to get the t out of the exponent here. We'll take the natural log of both sides. That allows us to rewrite the right hand side. You may remember that the natural log of e is 1. So the right hand side of the equation is really 0.05t. Let's divide both sides by 0.05 and we'll know what t is. So we'll divide both sides by 0.05. That leaves us with the calculator problem. There's the calculator code. My calculator gives a result of 6.3695, so on. And because we're compounding continuously, we'll just leave the, t the time as that amount.